Hi, I'm Arlen Walker, and I'm live from Pelham's Wasteland, and today I have got another episode of Western Hero Tutorials, character building tutorials for you guys. Um, specifically, we are building the 150-point cowpoke rather than the 100-point cowpoke that we built last time. So we're basically just adding another 50 points worth of stuff to this character. Now, before we get into this, there are a couple things I want to say. I got some great comments on the last episode. Um, in particular, there were a couple things I wanted to address in this episode that are related to those comments. So the first one that I want to address is that um, basically... Do, 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 do. Okay, um, basically, one of the comments I got was about um, complications and disadvantages, and there was a, a point made that, you know, you could have more points if you took some complications and disadvantages to... Uh, and that, that actually provides a lot of stuff for role playing. And I totally agree. I, I really like the way that complications and disadvantages work in the hero system. I think they um, create a really... Um, a lot of fodder for role playing that's really good. Um, for these characters, I am not doing that just because of what I'm going to use these characters for, which is basically I'm going to use them sort of for um, templates for my own um, material, basically to basically to make it really easy that I can you know take the hundred point cowpoke, adjust a couple of points here and there, and have a good kind of you know. NPC cowboy, NPC bandit, that sort of thing. Take it and adjust a little more and have like the bartender at the saloon uh, or adjust it a little more than that and have a good, um, you know, saloon girl, uh, uh, a barmaid essentially, or, you know, adjust it um, different places and, and basically use these um, 100, 150, 200, and 250 point um, characters as sort of good starting points for my um, my own material. So anyway, what I'm getting at about that is that therefore I am um, yeah, I am I'm I'm not adding complications and stuff to them yet. Once they become kind of real characters, and likely I'll add some complications, especially if they're like a major NPC. Um, and then they'll have more points to add back into their stuff, basically. Um, another point was made that even those low skills are pretty good because you could give characters a bonus to their skill when they were doing something related to that skill and had some type of advantage. So the example was used with climbing, that um, the 100-point cowpoke only has a climbing rating of 8, but if that 100-point cowpoke basically um, had, you know, rope and a harness and all that sort of stuff, they could get like a plus 2 or even a plus 4 to their climbing rating to represent the, the advantage of having good equipment and um, therefore would be a lot more likely to succeed. And I think that's a really good point because that speaks to how you would want to play that 100-point character is that you want to prepare, you want to plan, you want to basically um, play more strategically than with a um, kind of super high level character who doesn't need any of that, right? A, a character with like a climbing of 13 already has essentially that bonus built into their character because they spent points on it and so doesn't need to necessarily, they could use rope, right? That would definitely be an advantage. But um, a, a sort of higher point level character in a kind of flat world is not going to need as many of those kind of planned advantages, not going to depend on their equipment as much, all of that sort of stuff. And that speaks to the way that characters will function differently at different point levels. So... And uh, the, the same commenter said that a 100-point uh, character is what they use for a sort of good base level for fantasy hero. And I thought that was a really um, good thing to know because they are, that's Fred Daniel who um, clearly knows more about hero system or has spent more time with it than I have. And um, it was good to hear that he thought that the, um, you know, the 200-point the character is not necessary for a playable character by any means. So um, anyway, this is our, we're going to go up to the 150 point cowpoke now. Um, the other comment that I had was about um, 
combat luck in particular. And I think it was a comment based on my um, solo play character that I have been working on, um, who we will talk about when we get to that. But um, he has a couple levels of combat luck, which gives him RPD and RED, which is resistant physical defense and resistant energy defense, which is basically, um, essentially works like armor. It is direct damage reduction to killing damage. Now, one of the limitations of this edition of Western Hero is that it does not have a lot of um, explicit limitations on spending points. Um, there's sort of an expectation, I think, that the game master should be available when the players are creating their characters and should be, um, you know, talking to them about what's good for the campaign and what's not going to be good for the campaign and all that sort of stuff. But there's not a lot of kind of hard math. So one of the things that I'm doing with this piece is basically saying um coming up with and trying to figure out what i would be okay with in terms of the math that for instance um without any limitation you could just put a bunch of points because it's two com two character points for a plus one rpd and a plus one red so you could put you know 12 points and get a plus six Defense and a Colt Peacemaker is, which is a sort of standard pistol, only does two d six minus one, which averages out at six damage. Which means you could sort of shrug off most shots with the Colt, and that doesn't really, I think, fit what I want from this game. And so one of the one of my ideas is, well, what if you said that, for instance, every uh, hundred and fifty points above the base, kind of starting one hundred you can spend up to two points on combat luck. So a 250-point character will have three RPD versus a 150-point character will only have one RPD, in all likelihood, because it makes sense to spend those points on that. And thus, that creates a sense um, a little bit like levels in a leveled game where you know the higher point character is... Um, got some kind of uh, power level elements, a little bit like Mutants and Masterminds power level in the sense that it's still a point by creation, but there's sort of um, limitations based on the total number of points available as to how you can spend them. So that's sort of something that I'm, and that's part of why I'm doing this um, series is to get a sense of what I want from those sorts of things, basically to get a sense of like, okay, I think it would be good to um, limit certain point spins based on the total point levels, that sort of thing. Um, so that is what, um, what I wanted to say about that. So for this character, the 150 point cowpoke, we are not going to necessarily make the most efficient character that we can. Um, but what we're going to do is sort of set this character up for upgrading. We're going to, um, we didn't invest in the 100 point cowpokes core attributes at all. So we're going to do that now, essentially. Um, so we're going to boost up to 15 strength, 15 dex, 15 con. 15 intelligence, 15 ego, and 15 presence. And that is going to cost us 35 points because it's five points for each of them except for dex, which is 10 points um, for, for five points of upgraded dex. So that adds up to uh, 25 plus 10 is 35. So um, plus five to all core at... Oh. I did a plus first, so um, all six core attributes plus five, and that costs us 35 points. So now we're at 135 out of 150. What we are also going to do, we are going to bump up his DCV just a little bit to six and bump up his speed to three. And that's going to give him more phases to act, which is actually going to be pretty useful because this character, this is going to make our character, even though they're not necessarily that, going to hit that much more often in terms of the total shots that they fire because their OCV isn't getting bumped. Um, their higher DCV means they're going to get hit less often and their higher speed means they're going to get to act more often in combat. So that is another 
um, plus one DCV, I uh, know, DCV plus one is five points. And um, what did we do? Speed plus one. Speed plus one is, is that 10 points, I believe? Let me double check, but I think that is everything that we have to spend. Uh, speed, yeah, speed is plus one. Let's actually get rid of that speed plus one. Let's save that for another time, and we'll, we'll knock his speed back down to a two, and um, have him act on those phases, and we'll upgrade skills instead. Um, so one of the things about our skills is that all of the skills that are attached to an attribute are um, got a bonus from raising our attributes. So what we're going to do is we're going to bump up. We're going to bump up analyze, intelligence, charm to presence, navigation to intelligence, gambling to presence, analyze, charm, gambling, navigation. Analyze to uh, int charm to pre gambling to presence navigation to int navigation to intelligence. What else do we need? Let's do persuasion to presence, um, survival to intelligence, tracking to intelligence, persuasion, survival, tracking, to int, Int, and these are all ones. So that leaves us with three points left. Let us get um, plus one point in medicine, plus one point in fast draw, and let's get another point in area knowledge local. Fast draw plus one, medicine plus one, knowledge local plus one. That will be all of our points to spend. So now we have a hero. Um, our hero is not, our 150 point cowpoke is not that much better at a lot of these things. He's a little better. Um, he or she, I should say, is a little better, um, has some better skill rating, as you can see, you know, just looking through. There's only climbing at an eight, deduction at an eight, weaponsmith at an eight, um, and then everything else is 10 or higher, which is pretty good. That's a, that's a, you know, pretty capable character in terms of skills. But also because we upgraded the characteristics, those characteristic roles are going to be higher too. So instead of an 11 or less, it's going to be a 12 or less, which means that this character is a lot more flexible than that 100 point cowpoke. Right, they've got a much better chance of succeeding on like a dex roll for a skill that they don't have than they did before, which is pretty cool. They also have an extra point of DCV, so they're going to be harder to hit. They don't have that extra point of speed yet, which they're going to get at some point, um, probably the next level up, um, the next set of points, we will give them an extra point of speed. Um, Combat-wise, this character is still not um, that deadly, really, um, compared to what you can end up with. But they're, they're pretty good. They're, you know, this is no slouch of a character, and they're much more flexible. That's the big thing, I think, about the way we built this particular character, is that they are much more flexible than the um, 100 point cowpoke because of these characteristic values. They're also, you know, um, this character does 3d6 hand to hand damage instead of 2d6. So they're going to be um, more effective in a fist fight, you know, 
um, all of that sort of stuff. So they do 3d6 stun instead of 2d6, um, and they do 3d6 for a presence attack. Um, so they're going to be more effective in a in a fist fight, in a presence situation. They're they're basically instead of building up, we built wide for this character in a lot of ways. But that's really good because. In play, this 150-point cowpoke has a lot of potential to grow and develop and change and, and become a really capable character because we've sort of laid the groundwork for this character now, right? We've got a character that, you know, as they get points, they don't need to spend on the big stuff like these strength and dex and all that sort of stuff. They've already spent that those points and so they can spend directly on skills or directly on skill levels for um, flexible levels of OCV and DCV which is always useful um, they can spend directly on particular talents that might be useful on particular perks that might be useful all of that sort of stuff they they've essentially had sort of the the foundation already laid for a very capable character which is really cool and that is i think something that is really interesting about the way that you can build characters that um our first our hundred point cowpoke was um pretty effective in a number of the things that they are supposed to be good at but was really not that flexible compared to this character this character is even more effective at those specific things like their writing is higher their profession cowboy is higher all that sort of stuff but they're a lot more flexible and so this is at the level, this 150 point character, right? That 100 point character was sort of a good, you know, like an NPC, an extra in a um, Western film. This 150 point character, we're starting to get into kind of main characters. So um, this 150 point character in a Western, I don't know if you guys have seen The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. If you have not, it is a phenomenal film. Uh, a phenomenal Western by John Ford starring John Wayne and Jimmy Stewart. And I can't remember the female lead um, who is the, the love interest of both of them. There's sort of a love triangle in addition to the sort of um, chaos with, um, you know, Liberty Valance himself, the sort of villain of the, the, the movie. Um, and it is no uh, no spoiler to say that somebody shoots Liberty Valance because that's the the title of the film. Anyway, um, which is of course a, a really fascinating you know for a, a film about the American West, the idea of having a, a main character who's a villain called Liberty is kind of an interesting um, twist. Anyway, um, what I'm getting at is that John Wayne and Jimmy Stewart's characters probably are not a whole lot more capable than this they are um you know good at the stuff they're supposed to be good at you know john wayne's character he can shoot well especially if he is you know in a position where he can you know aim a shot and prepare and all that sort of stuff um uh jimmy stewart's character or james stewart's i don't know if you say which which one you say but i've heard both um, Stuart's character is uh, got a lot of skills, a lot of kind of education skills. He's sort of a, uh, a an Easterner who's come out to the West to to civilize the place and make his name and all that sort of stuff, and is not much of a uh, gunman or anything like that. Um, anyway, the uh, point being basically that um, yeah, this is. Uh, this is a totally playable character that would fit in with a campaign like that, right? John Wayne's character is probably only built with another, you know, 20 or 30 points higher than this in that sort of low-powered Western. Now, in a more kind of higher-powered Western, you know, more of a spaghetti Western where a character might um, blast, you know, a couple of people. Um, for instance, I, uh, in another example... I don't know. I have not seen the original 310 to Yuma, but the the remake with Christian Bale and Russell Crowe, I remember watching and enjoying. There's a sequence near the end. Russell Crowe blasts down um, five guys with five shots and then kills uh, one of the guys that he shot um, with a, a sixth shot, all, all six shots of the six shooter, um, and does it seemingly in, in just a second like that. Um, that's not this character. This character would need um, 
another, you know, 50 or maybe even 100 points to be that capable to take, you know, five shots before anybody gets a chance to respond. But you could definitely build a character like that, and we will end up with a character like that as we build, you know, our 200-point cowpoke, and then eventually our 250-point cowpoke are going to be much closer to that level of character um, combat-wise in in the, the particular world. And so really what I'm getting at is that the hero system seems to me, as somebody who is not an expert in it but is... Um, has read through a lot of the stuff that there's some some great flexibility to how you can do stuff based on what kind of level you set the average NPC in the world at, what level you set the average enemies at, what level you set the players at points wise, and the relationship between all of those things and how you allow them to spend points. You know, whether you one of the, the house rules that I've also been thinking about is to say that characters cannot spend more than half of their points on combat stuff, basically, to, to try to make it so that um, even a 200 or 250 point character will not just be a combat monster who guns down literally everyone but can barely function outside of a gunfight um, to create more well-rounded characters um, that they would need, that players would need to spend points outside of kind of combat abilities. And that's the thing that, you know, plenty of players don't need to be told that, but some of them do. And, and I think having that as a clear expectation would help for uh, a game like this, where it is so flexible. And, you know, if you said, okay, build me a 200 point, um, gunslinger, some characters will come to you. Some players will come to you with a character that, like I said, all they do is, shoot and they're incredibly deadly at that but they're not um really nearly as capable outside of combat um as they could be so anyway this is our 150 point cowpoke took a lot less time this time because we just sort of upgraded the the easy stuff this time um but yeah this is a character this is about where i would probably want to start most um most campaigns here at the 200 point level um, to give players a, a fairly kind of high powered sense of their character and then also to make it um, I feel like one of the things about a high powered um, points by system is that you can do a lot of stuff with adjusting the numbers on the enemies so you know this 150 point cowpoke or a 200 point cowpoke versus the 100 point base is going to be um this one is not going to be that much more deadly but you could definitely we could have spent our points differently and made a um, much deadlier gunslinger for the 150 point level so anyway my point is just that this is a, a wonderfully flexible system there's some really cool stuff to it um and it did not take very long for us to upgrade our character um, took really only about 10 minutes and that was, you know, a lot of that was just filling out stuff and looking through the book to make sure I was using the right numbers and, um, all that. So anyway, thank you for watching. Um, everybody, like I said, I've gotten some great feedback on this series, which is really cool because it's, um, something that I thought would be a good, uh, a good thing to do for the, uh, the community essentially uh, for people who are interested in the hero system and Western hero in particular. So anyway, I've been Arlen Walker. I've been live from Pelham's Wasteland and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.